I graduated from college in 1968, and 1968 had been a very rough year for the country, for all of us who were paying attention to politics and the social upheaval that was going on. The following spring, in early 1969, I moved to Miami as a young 22-year-old freelance photographer working for, among other people, Time Magazine. Summer, though, when it became clear that July was going to be the uh, the launch of Apollo 11 to actually land on the moon, I thought it really would be interesting to just see who the people were who were going to come and watch this launch because it was like a magnet. People came from everywhere. If you if you wandered along the um, the water's edge near Titusville, where people were camped, you could see license plates from everywhere, Michigan, Indiana, Pennsylvania. So I ended up spending uh, the, the day of, and the night of the 15th kind of camped out with these folks. And I must say, it was, it was a real American experience. You had people of, of cars of every kind and shape that they were sleeping on, in, and under. You had campfires on the beach, because it really was a grand event. It was not just the launching of a rocket, but it, I think there was so much embedded in the dreams of people that the crowd really reflected that. And there's a couple of pictures of, of a couple necking in the back seat of a car. One, that's one of my favorite pictures. It's kind of this great little moment. And, and you know that this kid, who's probably 19 or 20, is there with his girlfriend and he's thinking, man, if I'm ever going <laughs> to make it with this girl. There were all these quirky little moments, uh, people barbecuing and cooking on the beach and looking at, they, everybody brought their binoculars or in some cases people brought a telescope. Everybody wanted to be just a little closer than that, eight miles or whatever it was that we were from the launch site. And when it came down to 9.32, which was the moment of launch, uh, just before that, I had waded out into the water so that I could look back into the faces. And of course, it's a very, um, it's just, a, it was a, a long, eye catching moment. And as it came down to watching the rocket go, and we could hear this incredible noise from that Saturn V, it wasn't just the noise, but the, the shock wave from the noise would kind of pop off your body. It's very hard to describe it. It's almost like somebody was sort of, you know, patting on your body with their flat of their hand and that was the shock wave of the water coming of the rocket coming across the water and at one point I know as I could see in everybody's faces this sort of look of awe and I thought well I'm not going to come all the way up here and not at least see that rocket go once so I turned around and I made one or two frames of the rocket just as it cleared the tower and uh, then went back to photographing the people these things are very transitory they, they look like they may last for a while, but the rocket is up and gone in really under a minute. And then you're just left with, you've got the smoke and the contrail of what was, and, and this sort of look in people's faces like they've seen it. Pictures are not always the most valuable at the moment you shoot them. There's something to letting them stew in their own historical juices a little bit that makes photographs take on a, uh, a whole different meaning and a whole different feeling uh, by letting them age a little bit, like a fine wine, I suppose. Not all, and some turn into vinegar, there's no question about it. But as I started to go through these pictures, I couldn't believe that I had this whole little story of that little bitty moment in time when people came down to watch Apollo 11.